everyone. Um, I am Robert Duvukai. Uh, welcome to this episode of Meet the Faculty. Uh, today, I am joined by Susan Rosecrant. Susan, how are you today? I am great, thanks, um, and happy to be here and having a chance to talk with you. Oh, I'm happy you're here as well. So, Susan, let's just get right into this. Uh, the first question I want to know is, why did you want to become a professor, a lecturer? Why did you come into academia, this field? What are some of your goals? Um, what drives you to teach? What are some of your interests and stuff like that? Well, um, first of all, I never intended to be a teacher. Uh, that was, I was not one of these people who thought, yes, this is what I want to be in front of a crowd of people. So um, I've always found it terrifying, in fact, to be in front of people. So I'm a, I'm a writer, journalist. Uh, I think a lot of writers and journalists tend to be fairly introspective and uh, often don't like that public role. Actually, I think a lot of teachers are the same way, which is kind of interesting. But um, after a long career as a journalist and writer, I, my husband and I were able to move back to Ann Arbor in 2007. We'd been in the Boston area for about 30 years. And um, I ran into my old writing teacher at the RC's 40th anniversary, uh, Warren Hecht, who had started the creative writing program. So I'm an alum. Uh, I loved my time at the RC and uh, did a lot of creative writing. And I, I, you know, I thought, oh, I haven't said enough to Warren. And I went back to check in with him. And he said, you know, you should be a teacher here. And I, ha, ha, ha. He said, no, seriously, you should be a teacher here. And uh, I thought, OK, um, I tried it. And um, it was, again, you know, one of the most scary experiences of my life was walking down the hall to my first class. Uh, but then it turned out I loved it. And I felt like I really had something to share with students. And I really enjoy uh, teaching college students. I, I think um, the two courses I teach are, the first is for incoming first year students. The last is for mostly outgoing seniors and uh, watching that change in students, some of whom I see in both classes has been remarkable. And I, I think it's a great job for an introvert because you get to interact for a particular reason with these really interesting people and uh, learn from them and help them learn. So um, again, it, was, it wasn't a, a profession that I expected, but to be back at the RC in this role, interacting with people who are so engaged and committed strikes me every day as a small miracle that I'm incredibly grateful for. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you go into your experience kind of with the RC, how you feel it's been? What are kind of like those gems and things that you treasure about it? You know, that uniqueness that the RC brings that no other place has? So when I was at the RC, this is in the early 70s and already it was an amazing place. It was experimental. Uh, it allowed for a lot of innovation. I did several independent studies ranging from mycology study, a collecting wild mushrooms over one summer with Alexander Smith, who was one of the top mycologists in the country to writing poetry, uh, translating Chinese poetry from uh, ancient Chinese poems into English. Uh, my, my major was Chinese and I was also doing a lot of creative writing. Uh, so just that ability to have really create my own schedule and life and future with my classes. And then the amazing thing is coming back. Uh, you would think that things might've changed in the years I was away and First of all, some of the same faculty were here, including Warren and others. Um, and that's remarkable to have a place that so engages its faculty that they, they just want to stay and stay. Um, so, so that was great to see. And then freedom to design the course that I want, freedom to grow within the faculty. Um, I'm a lecturer, as you mentioned. There aren't very many places at the university where lecturers could start from 
one class to becoming the head of a program. And that's exactly what happened with me. The lectures take on significant, um, some of the most significant roles uh, at, the, at the residential college. There isn't the traditional hierarchy. And I think that leads to a great degree of collegiality, experimentation, and um, both in terms of how we operate within the college and then of course with our courses, uh, which we can again, have a lot of freedom in designing and uh, doing something that no one's, no one's done before. Yeah, so I want to go back to you mentioning your first year seminar, Truth Through Story, the Art and Craft of Narrative Journalism. Could you go into that class, um, what you teach in that class, what are some of the goals of that class? And what can you tell um, to students for them, what could they expect if they were to take this class in the fall? Yeah, um, so I'm a former journal journalist. I, I went to journalism school after uh, graduating from University of Michigan and worked at Associated Press and Business Week and as a freelancer. Um, and so that's a lens that I thought would be really helpful for students uh, to learn about writing and to think about writing. And students in the class, one of the important things is I wanted to get students out in the community because I think as, an, as a first year student, sometimes Ann Arbor is intimidating, being in a new place is intimidating. I barely left my dorm uh, in the first year I was at East Quad myself. And so I thought, all right, got to get students out there. And so students learn how to interview. They learn how to look for stories. Um, we practice interviewing in class with, with their classmates. Uh, we go over a lot of different interviewing tactics and techniques. And uh, you may know interviewing people isn't isn't that easy. If you're not experienced with it, it can be a frightening thing to do, but I think students are very proud and I think it's a great skill to have uh, to be able to go out and, and talk to a person and ask them intelligent questions and do that kind of original research and information gathering for a story. So in addition to that, of course, we read a lot of great narrative journalism. Uh, In Cold Blood is um, one book that we read that most students haven't read before, or if those who have, it's still an excellent book to talk about. We talk about truth in journalism, um, being as truthful as we can, and what that means in terms of showing multiple sides of story. Uh, I want students to become more sophisticated and critical readers. I want them to understand how to look for is this story telling both sides? And how can I do that in my own writing? And, um, and, and at the end of the day, most important, I want them to become better writers. I want them to cut out unnecessary words. All of my students will hear this. Um, you know, get rid of the things that aren't, don't need to be there. I, I really believe in clear and concise and original writing, but you don't have to lose your originality uh, in order to write well, you can you can cut out sometimes half of the words and it just gets better. And that's one of the things we work on. Yeah, could you touch on, I guess, the importance of narrative journalism as sort of like a subgenre of literature overall? How does it kind of fit into that broader lens? And I guess, what do you explore with students in that context? Narrative journalism if anything has become more important in the 10 years or so that I've been teaching this class, because for one thing, their readers have short attention spans. Uh, it's, it's hard to grab their interest with a traditional news story often. So I think publications and news organizations more and more are moving to storytelling as a way to get information across. And that can be equally effective with, um, advocacy journalism, where you're actually looking to create some kind of effect with the, um, the people, you're, the audience you're writing to, and with straight journalism, because people want to read a story. It's an important way to get people involved, get them to 
understand a situation better than straight news journalism can do. So uh, it is storytelling. It's also a, a, you know creative nonfiction is a is a broad field. Uh, my memoir writing class is another side of that. And uh, again, it's it's a it's a way of looking at personal stories and making them mean something to other people as well as yourself. So it's, it's, it's really all about understanding themes and understanding the importance of even small stories in letting people understand a broader issue. Yeah, so I did want to touch on one thing that you mentioned earlier, and that's getting students to go out, explore Ann Arbor in the spirit of narrative journalism. How have you had to adapt the class to this COVID climate? You know, yeah. what challenges, you know, are you seeing? And then how are you kind of overcoming those uh, obstacles with your students? Yeah, so that definitely made a big difference last year. I'm hoping that this coming year it won't be as much that way, but First of all, we weren't necessarily all in Ann Arbor um, last year. One of my students was in New Zealand and had a very different situation going on. So it was important to let students still find ways to get out and observe and interview people in a way that was safe. So it, to a large extent, I left that up to students to figure out but with guidance, of course, I didn't want anyone going into a, a place um, where they might be putting their health at risk. So there were more interviews, for example, with family members. Uh, we talked about and learned about doing uh, interviews over Zoom, such as we're doing right now. So that wasn't something I'd had a lot of experience with before, but it works surprisingly well. So combination of Zoom interviews, um, you know, one of the assignments, the first assignment students do is just to go out and observe a place. So that can be done in a quite an open air environment and still be interesting. You know, it meant they couldn't do things like go into a tattoo parlor or a police station or a hospital. And, you know, these are some, or, or even ride a bus, you know, and describe the passengers, which are some of the interesting things students have done in the past. Uh, but they came up with with still great ways of writing about the world and observing the world. Uh, the student in New Zealand, they had not locked things down because they had such a low incidence of COVID there. And so she was able to go into a casino and uh, interview <laughs> workers there. Uh, that was a great story. So again, it was interesting with people in different parts of the world to see how that affected their ability to be in the world, but I would say it didn't stop anyone from still being able to do a, a good and effective job with their assignments.